Hi, I'm Callie from CRK Training. This is Mojo, and Mojo and I are here today to talk to you and to answer a few questions about bitless bridles. So when Mojo had his head turned there, you may have noticed that he is blind in his right eye, so he has uh, uveitis, and he went blind in that eye several years ago. But for today's topic, the bitless bridle, I wanted to talk a little bit about the different types of bitless bridles that you can choose to use, reasons that you might use a bitless bridle, and then also some limitations or some things that you want to understand and keep in mind when you're using this kind of tool or equipment. So first, let's talk about some reasons that you might want to use a bitless bridle. So some, some common reasons are either if the horse has a physical problem in his mouth or maybe an injury to his tongue, something that's going to make it uncomfortable for him to hold the bit or to have any pressure from the bit, the bitless bridle can be good in those cases. Uh, another time would be if the rider has unsteady hands or a novice rider, a bitless bridle can be really good for helping uh, kind of save the horse's mouth and being a little bit kinder for the horse. Also, some horses have some uh, negative kind of associations with the bit if they've been handled really roughly with the bit. And I've found that um, Sometimes for those type of horses, putting on a bitless bridle, they'll actually go much quieter and you might be able to get rid of some problems like head tossing, teeth grinding, or some general anxiety that the horse is, is feeling just because of having that bit and associations that they have with that. So there are a lot of different kinds of bitless bridles available. Uh, to kind of put them roughly in categories, we have uh, bitless bridles like the side pull, which we're going to see next, that works off of just direct pressure. There's also bitless bridles that work off of leverage, which would be like your mechanical hackamores. And then we also have bridles that work off of kind of a combination of both, which would be something like this cross under style. This is a Dr. Cook brand bitless bridle that Mojo is wearing right now. So when you are using a bitless bridle, I think it's generally good to understand why you're using it. And actually another reason is some people just like the fact that bitless bridles are easier to put on. Uh, for trail riding, they provide more freedom of the horse to eat or drink if you're doing long distance riding. So there can be some of those benefits as well. But it's good to understand why you're using the bitless bridle. Whatever style you choose to use, you want to know how it's working, where it's applying pressure, um, so that you can understand if your horse is doing certain things, how it might be potentially triggering those behaviors. I'll explain that in a second. And then also what some of the limitations of the bridle might be. So another common question that I get is, can I still train you know, all kinds of different responses? Can I do, for example, dressage, or can I jump in, in a bitless bridle? And the answer is yes, but again, you have to understand how pressure and your cues are being applied with the style that you choose, and then some limitations that that might have. So for example, with this cross under style bridle, when direct rein pressure is applied back, it puts pressure in several different places. So it applies pressure straight back on the nose. It also uses a little bit of a pulley action here to tighten the strap underneath of the head here and also that action then pulls down on the top of the pole. So it's kind of a general squeezing action of the whole head. Some horses I find don't mind this at all. Other horses I've found have actually uh, reacted kind of strongly to this squeezing pressure in the beginning. So if you're transitioning your horse from a bit to a bitless bridle just to maybe try it out, you have to be aware that the horse is now feeling pressure in a completely different way and you might have to kind of uh, reschool him a little bit, help develop some new cues to the, the new type of pressure that he's feeling in this different style bridle. So this is how a cross under style bridle works. The limitations of this type of bridle is that you have a little bit less direct control over the nose that you would have when you have a regular bitted bridle. So for example, I find it that it's not quite as easy to trigger responses such as uh, flexion 
or such as some bending. Once the horse understands cues, then you can absolutely do it, but I find that it takes a little bit longer, it can be a little bit tougher to train because it's harder to have that control over the nose to just trigger those responses in this type of a setup. Another thing to be aware of here, especially with some of the biothane, the synthetic leather, um, bitless cross under styles, is that there can be a bit of um, kind of drag with this pulley type system. So the pressure and the release isn't real specific. And sometimes when you release, I find that this doesn't soften immediately like the direct pressure of a bit or like some other styles of bitless bridle that work just more off of pressure on the nose. So you have to be aware of that, that your pressure and your release are a little bit dulled down and that your release might not necessarily be felt instantly by the horse, which can make training, especially kind of more fine-tuned uh, training situations, a little bit more difficult. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna put a different style on and we'll take a look at how that one works. So now Mojo is modeling the side pull and the uh, side pull works more off of direct pressure. So you can tell with this style, when pressure is applied back with the reins, it's basically just putting pressure here on the bridge of his nose. And there's also a little more control a um, little more kind of definite control over the nose because for example if I would apply some lateral pressure here it's just applying pressure on this side of his nose instead of the squeezing action that we saw with the cross under style. Now there's also styles of bitless bridle that the rein comes here and it kind of goes through the ring under the chin and then it, it comes and the other rein attaches so that when uh, pressure is applied it applies pressure up here. What you want to be aware of, this is again just starting to kind of realize how the different equipment works that you might be putting on your horse. If you're using that style of a bitless bridle and you notice that your horse seems to be tossing his head up a lot, you want to be thinking through that you might be accidentally training him to throw his head up. I've just seen those styles that apply pressure here trigger the horse to throw his head up and then when he throws his head up he finds a release. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use that particular style of bridle, but again, you just have to be aware of how is it applying pressure. And if I start to see certain behaviors uh, developing in the horse when I use that particular bridle, could it potentially be triggering those behaviors? And is it something that I want to work through? Or is it maybe easier to put the horse in a different piece of equipment? Or if you're just trying a bitless bridle for the sake of trying it out, and your horse seems to be more agitated by the bitless bridle, which I've seen happen, maybe you wanna go back to just a soft, simple bit. Now there's also the, the bitless bridles that, that Mojo has modeled for you um, have been, they'd be pretty hard to, to be abusive with these. I mean, honestly, with any piece of equipment, we can use them too harshly, but these don't use a lot of leverage pressure. The styles of bitless bridle that you have to be more careful with are things like mechanical hackamores. With these mechanical hackamores, if you are very strong with a mechanical hackamore, it can actually be uh, more severe than certain types of bits because it has such a, a leverage action. I'm sure there's other styles of bitless bridles out there that I haven't mentioned in today's video. So here's where I'd love to hear from you. Have you used a bitless bridle? Uh, why did you use it? And did you like it? Did your horse respond well to it? So I would love to get your feedback in the comments. And as always, if you're watching this anywhere besides crktrainingblog.com, go there. That's where the best comments happen. That's where the best conversation is. And I will see you at the blog.